Hey, welcome back to the Minimax 1100R build. And I'm gonna get some clamps off of here today. Um, all these things that I put in here. I started uh, pulling the nose together uh, yesterday. I just wanted to let the wood kind of get used to where it's headed. So, um, so I did. Uh, I did get that going. And what I did is I would move the the top bar clamp in a little bit, and then I would actually um, staple. Well, use my brad nailer. I would nail a block to this top surface here to the workbench and um, and just make sure that this member here is is uh, plumb and and I did the same on this side and so I just kept slightly moving it in a little bit and um, you know I mean I have to admit this uh, this pulling the nose process is scary as hell <laughs> the, uh, the, um, I had a little bit of epoxy on the back side of, of here, just over here on the back side. Um, it was just a little bit that uh, where some uh, squeeze out had kind of, get, anyway, it let go and made a cracking sound. And, and uh, that's kind of what, that's what freaks you out a little bit. So, so this is, uh, this is basically, how far we have to go. We have to go that much further, right there. So it's about maybe an inch on each side. And it is kind of nice to have a solid firewall um, to work with. It makes this, a, this makes this a whole lot easier. And uh, uh, so far, this, uh, modification for the half EW is, is, is going pretty well. So we'll, we'll be working on that um, part of it as soon as we get the uh, get this pulled in and and then get this kind of stapled in place. Uh, I'll be moving on to kind of getting the rest of the, uh, the curved pieces and uh, make a template of the shape that I need um, so that we can uh, we can continue on here so okay um, I will get uh, some clamps off and we'll get uh, situated and get ready to uh, to keep pulling this nose a little bit all right cool Alright, so now we want to continue this uh, <clears throat> this journey right here. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, like I mentioned before, it's just going to be moving uh, a little bit at a time. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll squeeze this in just a little bit more. get my couple blocks.
back. And I just want to see how we're doing on the center line, so. The center line is there. We're actually moving fairly, fairly equal. So we'll go another half, maybe another half an inch or so. <clears throat> I think after this move, I should be able to start using the, uh, should be able to start cranking and I, I could have had this all the way back, which would have helped, I think. Mean. Um. All right, a couple more blocks. <clears throat> All right, so this is where my where my ladder move stops. <clears throat> it, was a, it was a good idea for the first few, but uh, I just ran out of uh, ability there. So now. I think if I take a piece of a. Uh, Slide that in. Even that could be more. Let's take these off. I want to be able to crank the rest, so I'm going to actually grab another. Now I'm able to crank the rest of the way, so. Now 
I'm just slowly cranking it <clears throat> so I can see what I've got to uh, got to move the whole thing that way. So I'm going to take start taking some scraps here. Looks like I need to go at least this far. So push that in. something similar on the other side. I'm kind of glad that actually last night I I uh, started this process and just kind of let the let the wood sit here, kind of working on it. gonna make a couple wedges all right so I just made a couple of a uh, couple wedges out of some scrap pieces this I know that they don't look like scrap but um, actually it was the uh, the wood that had the slight checking in it so um, it's the wood that I rejected and actually I ran a test <clears throat> interesting I ran a I ran a test on this piece where I kind of pried open the checking area and then I epoxied I forced epoxy down in there. I was curious how far it would penetrate. Uh, and uh, it actually did, it actually did pretty good. Um, but anyway, so now I'm gonna use these to uh, go the rest of this distance. So. To say that actually that looks really good right now um, let me move you over here so you can actually see the, the center I'm tracking right on my right on my center line <clears throat> right on my center line right here the only thing I notice is that I've got good contact left and right toward the middle I need to actually get a little more uh, uh, a little more push at the very bottom and a little more push at the very top and I'll just quickly check the uh, how this is going here and it's actually looking really square this way this one's slightly different than that one basically showing what I'm seeing and I've got to grab another clamp because the uh, uh, I think when I epoxy it in I want to leave it where I can get it in and out at the moment but I need to get a little more pull right at the top and I need to get a little more 
push right at the bottom. Um, and I think I'll be good. I have noticed that um, since you get a little more width uh, with this uh, half VW modification, um, I don't have that kind of that deep uh, wasp right in here that I got with my other plane where the, the wood really kind of caved in. I could have a slight amount um, when I put, but it's nothing like, uh, like I saw before. So that's about how much it, uh, much it moved, about an eighth of an inch maybe from the top to bottom there. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to take my wedges and I'm going to actually, uh, reposition them so that, so that this wedge is on the table going this way. And then I can get more of a push at the bottom than I can this way because this is actually got, can move. And I have a tip down there that's really not providing a lot of uh, support. So uh, I'm, I'll switch that around. All right, so I decided the best, actually the best way to do this was just to use the wedge back here against the stop block so that I'm pushing the, uh, pushing the whole piece in. And that's actually working out a lot better. So now when I get... Uh, the epoxy in, I'll be able to get that uh, pushed in exactly how I want it. And then I'll do a kind of a, a clamp. I'll add a second clamp at the top just to kind of pull the uh, pull those bottom laundrons in just a little bit. And then I think I have to raise this just a tiny bit when I come up. Yeah. All right, so it's a uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking, but um, I think uh, everything's looking good, and uh, except for that one little epoxy spot. Um, the cool thing about when you're when you're putting these in, you you kind of start thinking to yourself, this, you know, this isn't a whole lot when you're. Uh, when you just have these butt joints, you're like, it's not a lot of strength there. But I, I have to tell you, when you fully sheet this, um, that's where your that's where your strength really comes in. Um, you know, every one of these cross members gets attached to the plywood. So if you think about it, it's attached. The plywood's attached here. It's attached here. And so the uh, the strength really lies in that plywood. Um, and uh, so don't uh, fret too much when you're putting these cross members in and that's why if that you know when that cracked a little bit last night it's not a concern because I'll make sure any voids are filled with epoxy and uh, and then uh, the plywood goes on that top surface so it has full contact and this is a uh, this couldn't have turned out uh, any better I'm super super happy with uh, what we got going on what we got going on there so um, and uh, so now um, all I have to do is uh, back off on these uh, clamps just a little bit get my uh, uh, get my piece out of there get some epoxy mixed up get it prepped and then uh, we can get this thing epoxied and stapled in place all right cool